Hey guys, Taka here. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to upload your own local fonts into ClickFunnels and then using it in the editor to edit your text. I'm gonna go and find a font that I want to use for this project. So I've gone ahead to Font Space. Um, I just found this website today and I'm gonna be using this font called Pelacore Font by Crump Hand. <laughs> it's a handwriting style. I want to download this so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this guy at the very right and I'm going to download file. I'm going to save that. Once it's done I'm going to go back into my click funnels, into my funnel, uh, go into the top right section, go into account settings and you're going to find a section called digital assets. Click on that and it's on the left hand side in the navigation. I don't have any digital assets in here right now so I'm just going to go ahead and click this yellow button that says new assets. And from this page, I'm gonna go and choose the font that I just downloaded. And I'm gonna name my asset. Pelicor. Uh, and I'm just going to add it. Now you have your first digital asset. Uh, when you see this, you're gonna go into the very right uh, in this menu, in these three dots in the very right. You're gonna click on it and then go copy asset path. Now don't paste this anywhere yet, or don't use the copy and paste functionality until we paste this in. I'm gonna go back into my funnels and find the funnel that I was working on. And I have a demo page that I'm practicing this on. Uh, and it, it can be, you can just start off in any page that you like, just to test this out. And I'm gonna find the settings button at the top. Uh, and if thin here, there's gonna be a custom CSS. When you click on that, you're gonna bring up your styling sheet for this page. In this styling sheet, we're gonna be using something called font face and we're gonna be calling on the font that we just uh, uploaded into ClickFunnels. So you're gonna start off this style sheet with at font dash face, open curly brackets, and you're gonna go font family, and the name, which is Pelicor for my font that I put up there, and close that. And you go src open, and you go url open brackets, uh, and then you're going to paste the link that you just copied from your digital assets, and then you're going to close the curly bracket. You're going to go into a new line, and this is where you start calling out specific elements within your page. Uh, so I'm going to start off with B, which is going to be bold. So anything put to bold will call on Pelicor. Uh, so I'm going to go B, open curly brackets, and then I'm going to go font family. Um, and then you just call on the name that you just uploaded, Pelicor. I'm going to close that, close my curly bracket. And from here, I'm just going to do all the styling for the main headline, subheading, paragraph, and then button. So to edit the headline, you're going to type dot HS, capital S, I, Z, E. And it's a, a three. And you open curly brackets. And go font family pelicor. Close that. For subheading, it's going to be dot hs size two. Uh, I'm just going to copy these lines. Save time. For paragraph, it's hs capital S I Z E one. Open curly brackets. Paste that in. For buttons, it's going to be dot el button uh, main open curly brackets in form family done. So as you can see, this is probably not ideal. I can't really read what it says. What I would probably do is uh, save this page as what it is. Uh, but I'm going to go into settings, custom CSS, and I'm going to go ahead and copy all of this. So Command A or Control A, and I go Command C. Or control C to copy all that and close out of it and then I'm going to exit uh, and I'm going to go into opt into my other page that I'm working on uh, and I'm going to edit page uh, Cupertino is a template that we're working on so that we can give it to some of our members so in this style sheet I'm just going to paste this in I'm going to be using Pelacor to emphasize on some parts of the title and give it some human touch. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete everything but HS size two, which is gonna be subheading 
and that should be good enough to use as some sort of uh, human touch. So you can see here, it's kind of dark, so I'm going to change the styling, text color, and then give it some orange. It's a little small. And this might be an interesting way to mix up your font game in your in your pages. I keep forgetting to mention about navigations and some other things that are inside the app. And you're seeing on the screen um, the pricing element. There is a navigation element. There is a list, and uh, this is a um, an image item list, I believe, or image list. You might be wondering what's going on on this page right now. So if I go look at the CSS, the styling sheet, you can see that um, everything from B to L button main is Pelicor. When ClickFunnels made this, they tagged um, the starting points here uh, as B, as bold. And that's why you're kind of seeing Pelicor right there. Because when I go into the custom CSS, you can see that B is still Pelicor. And so the starting point, these are Pelicor, Pelicor, Pelicor. And then for uh, lists, the starts are bolded. And if you unbold it, you can see that it is no longer Pelicor. So my advice in this situation is that is you can make all this bold, and that's going to pick up Pelicor. But if you don't want the list to be Pelicor, or this, the font that you decide to use, you can unbold these, and they will go back to its normal state. You'll see on the left hand side that these are not affected. And again, if you double click on them, highlight and bold it, they will turn into Pelicor. But what's happening is these are unordered lists. So in order to call these out, all of these as Pelicor, you could go into settings, custom CSS. And to show you a little comparison, I'm gonna use uh, another font called RetroCycles and show you what unordered list, that's what UL stands for. Uh, would do. So I'm calling unordered list is font family retro cycles, which I've called up up here. And you can see that this is now all retro cycles. But if I call B, if I highlight this and make it B, that title or that first part will turn into Pelicor, while the rest is retro cycles. You'll see that my navigation is also now retro cycles because it's created using uh, unordered list styling. And you'll see that this is also unordered lists in here. If you want the navigation to be completely different, you could go highlight, go into settings here, and then go down here into get CSS info. That's going to pull up the CSS ID selector. I'm going to select this, command C, copy it go into your settings custom css and in here i'm gonna paste that in you're gonna put space right afterwards and then put l i you're gonna open curly brackets next line and i'm just gonna copy this font family not that i'm gonna use it uh to show you i'm just gonna type in sans serif that's just gonna call a generic um sans serif typeface in there and when i close out of it there it is my navigation is a sans serif, just a random sans serif um, font. While everything else, uh, these are still UL, it's using the UL code. Uh, there might be some of you who actually don't want to apply uh, this specific font to all of your subheading. What you want to do is go add a new element. I'm going to pull in a paragraph since my subheadline is being used uh, by this guy, this font already. I'm going to change this to polar 8. I'm going to bump this up to 32. And of course, I need a color that I can see. I'm going to left align this. What you want to do is um, find this cog uh, when this blue box comes up, or it could be the orange one as well. And you can go into settings. And at the very bottom where it says all and right beside the eye, there should be a hashtag looking button. You're going to click on that and it's going to bring the CSS info. And this CSS info is specifically about this element that you just went into settings for. And it says paragraph because I've pulled up a paragraph box. 
uh, I might just change this title to my signature. And you're going to go into the CSS ID selector, control C or command C to copy it. You're going to go into settings, custom CSS and bring up your style sheet and make a new line in here in your style sheet. Um, and then you're going to paste that in. You're going to open curly brackets and type in your, f or you could just copy this font family color core. I'll close that, see what it does. And look at that. It's right there. And it's not affecting uh, any other text boxes. As you can see, it's only doing that to this specific element box. The only reason why I wouldn't suggest you guys do this, like specific um, CSS ID styling for fonts all over the place is because when you start doing that, it's going to get real messy really quickly, especially if you have a funnel with more than three pages, it's going to get really cumbersome if you don't have a really good organization in your style sheets. There might be some of you who are looking to add uh, more fonts into this page to spice things up. Uh, and that's definitely doable. You're going to go back into your digital assets and then you're going to just add a new asset, whatever that font is. I have a font here called Tunisia that I'm going to be adding into my digital assets. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy asset path, go back into my editor. You're going to go into your style sheet and I'm just going to paste the, the link, the path right now, just here generally, so I don't lose it, but I'm going to copy this font face, this whole section for font face with the font family and source, copy that command C I'm going to new line and command V paste it or control V paste it. I'm going to recopy this, uh, path asset path that I just uh, dropped on here. And I'm going to do command X to cut it or control X. That's just going to cut it. It's kind of like copying, but it just takes it away from the page. And I'm just going to replace this, um, with the new path. And of course I'm going to name this with a new name and it's called Tunisia. And just so you can see, I'm going to just add in my H one style. So you just size three, which is the headline open brackets font family Tunisia and that should be the new font. Uh, so now your page should be rendering two fonts within one page. Thanks guys. I hope that helped. I have two other videos on adding Google fonts into the editor and then also font awesome into the editor as well. Make sure to like, and subscribe. I'll be pumping out more content soon. See you in the next video. I think that's about it.